I have been preparing for this sermon, and uh, so this was my greatest concern. Uh, I am a doer. Uh, I'm a hearer and a doer. It says, blessed are the hearers and the doers of his word. Uh, I understand because the Bible talks about the seed. It talks about what the seed is. The seed is the word of God, right? The seed is the word. Make sure you got that. You got that. You got it. The seed is the what? The word of God. So that's the seed. So whenever the farmer goes out and he scatters seed, he's sowing the word. So I'm preaching. I'm scattering seed, seed. So seed and word are synonymous. The word is? Seed and seed is the, the word is, and seed is the, the word. I got that part. So I got that the seed is word and the word. So every time I am reading scripture, what I'm doing is I'm feeding myself the seed. Seed, yes, and the word. Good job. All right. And I know that uh, the word is the seed and the seed is the word. And the seed has to be planted on soil. The soil is my heart. Yes, the soil, that's my heart. So the word has to go into my heart. So I got the seed, the seed in the soil, and the soil in the seed. And the, Oh, that's another song. All right. So we got the seed in the soil. The soil is my heart. So the seed goes into my heart. And as the seed goes into my heart, now I can start to deliver some sort of, of growth. So I got that part. I got, I got the heart is the, um, the soil is the, is the heart. The seed is the word of God. And Jesus so this is the part that, I, that baffled me, and it was so plain to me, but, you know, when you're searching the deeper things of God, because I don't want to just give y'all something you heard 20 years ago, uh, I was like, well, which part is the stalk of the tree? Like, this part. So I was like, well, wh what is that? Like, anybody know what that is? That's... I was like, how? That's the part that grows up. How do we grow that part? Because I got the seed. The seed is the word, and the heart is the so, and I was like, what is this thing? And I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out until I went to the word of God. Now, you may stand after you just got comfortable. And I'm going to tell you what that is. This is what John chapter 15 says it is. He says, I am the true vine. What? So the seed is the? And the heart is the? And Jesus is the? I say, my, 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 my. But then he, does, he goes on. He says, and my father is the. So now we're seeing how this whole thing works together. The seed goes into the soil, which is my heart. And then it says that Jesus is the. So this whole gardener, and who's the, who's the gardener? God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was, and the word was. So I say, God, you got this thing all figured out. Somebody asked me, they said, how big is God? I said, I think we're walking inside of God, right? Scientists don't know how big the universe is. They don't know where it ends. They don't know where it begins. So that means that the better they get technology, they just see further and further and further away. I said, I bet you we're in God's hand. And we can't even see it because it's too massive for us. Because if he is the word, and he's the seed, and he works in our heart, and Jesus is the, 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 the vine, I'm like, man, this whole thing is all connected. So he says, I'm the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Then he just gets real tough right here. He, he goes off the deep end because the first part was good. He says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. It says, remain in me. And I saw, and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can, the, can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. There's a scripture that says, I am the vine. And then he says that you are the branches. Turn to the person that you say, what's up, branch? Make sure you pronounce it correctly. What up, Branch? What's up? <laughs> so Jesus is the? We are the, the branches, and he cuts off everything that does not bear fruit. What does he cut off? 
the branch. And then he says, for the branches that are producing, he prunes. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are the gardener. We thank you that there is no growth without the vine. So, Father, we call on the vine, Jesus. We know that no growth happens apart from you. But when we remain in you, we can bear much fruit. So, Father, show us the areas that you're pruning so that we can bring forth more fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. Now you may be seated in the house of the Lord. The soil is the the seed is the Jesus is the and God is the we got a whole place full of growth. After you have been planted after you've been connected now it's time for us to grow. I have this stick. This stick uh, is in, 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 uh, here I go with that word again. It indicates what it looks to be cut off from the tree. When a vine is connected to the branch, it produces the nutrients from the soil. It's possible that there's nutrients coming up through the vine, but it's being robbed by dead things. So a good gardener will cut off dead things so that the good things can get more. That's why the Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. If you don't know that scripture, you need to remember that. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. So all of the wicked things that are down here, don't worry, because soon it will be cut off. So we can look at our folks that are, are doing well and, and we say, well, I'm faithful and I'm doing the things of God, but I don't see uh, the, the fruitfulness of it. Don't worry. Because at some point, those that are not serving God will be cut off. This is what this whole, whole thing looks like when we are gardening. So anybody ever used one of these before? All right, yeah. You, when, you, when you use this, what do you normally use this to do? Cut off some stuff, right? You gotta, you've got to cut off some things in order for some things to grow. This is the part that uh, was a revelation to me. Did you know that you don't have to cut anything out of your life? What? Find me a scripture that says cut off. Guess who cuts it off for you? The gardener. So you know those, those people that you was like, I think I need to cut them off. Don't worry about it. Just pray about it. Because in due season, he will. This ain't the real stuff. I bet this will do it. Real or not, it's going to cut some stuff up. <laughs> So as I was, I was pondering about this and I was looking at these branches, I was looking at all of this stuff and I was like, man, okay, what does that really mean? Like, what, what does it mean that he'll, he'll cut off, he'll, he'll prune, he cuts off the things that are, are, are not bearing fruit and he'll prune the things that are bearing fruit? Both of those are very painful processes. When he cuts off stuff, uh, it hurts. I mean, if somebody starts cut, cutting your limbs off, you'd be upset about that. I mean, when they tell you that you have to have something amputated, there's a, a sense of fear that comes with losing something. But sometimes the things that we lose is necessary. That he needs to cut those things off. But he's not talking about uh, um, uh, productivity in your life. He says he'll cut off a branch if it's not bearing fruit, meaning that he'll cut some people off. Now that baffled me because something, uh, there's a scripture that says nothing can separate us from the love of, right. So if nothing can separate us from the love of God, what does that mean? He says, I'm not talking about my love. He's talking about growth. 
And when he's talking about growth, he's entering a different dynamic of spiritual fruit that we need. Now, when we're talking about growth and we're talking about spiritual fruit, we got to be real, real clear about what this means. Because we talk about bearing fruit. If you're in the old school Baptist church, that means you're not inviting enough people to church. If you're not inviting folks to church, you're not bringing souls to Christ and you're not being fruitful. That's the old school Baptist church. That's the way that they read that. But that's not what that means. Because when the Bible talks about fruit, it says the fruit of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control. So if we look at what fruit is, he's saying that if you're not producing the fruit, then guess what? You're not connected to the vine. So I say, well, is this whole life just so that we can have love, joy? In, In America, there's so much more. But I've talked to the wealthiest and I've I've seen the poorest and what they all say is at the end of it all, none of this stuff matters. Wow. Everything that you wake up and stress out about, guess what? It does not. Because when your health is gone, and that's when Ms. Brenda was up here last week, when your health is gone, there's nothing that you want with these other things but for your health to be revived and for you to be healthy and to be better. But the next thing that we had to look at was the relationships. So if I'm, I'm healthy, that means that I am connected to the vine and the vine is producing the nutrients that I need. And then it goes into the relationships because the relationships is where we really show our fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience. The only things that can rob us of that is people. Dang. People. People at your job, people in your house. People that drive slow in front of you. People that pull out in front of you. People that are not considerate. Your greatest problem is people. How many can attest to that? Like, if you think about what it is, it's it's people. Like, your kids, they're your biggest, they're 14 now. They think they got a mind of their own. And they can call a shot. Hadn't paid for a dime. They ain't paid for nothing. But think they have some say-so, like they have right to the, to, to, to the household, like they have something. And, and when we focus on the people, we're less productive in the fruit, and we wind up being unhealthy. So our health is directly related to our relationships. Because if our relationships are good, then my mindset is good. If our relationships are good, then my health is good. If my relationships are good, I'm in a better spirit. But if it's not there, it is going to affect my my health. So how is it that we are supposed to remain friendly, faithful, loving, kind, goodness, self-control, all of these fruit of the Spirit? He says, don't worry about how to do it, just stay connected to to me. Because when we exit the vine, we can be full of life but produce no fruit. These branches, these leaves look like there's fruit. It looks like if you leave it there long enough, it'll produce something, right? I mean, if this was an orange tree, it's at some part in the life, it should produce something. But Jesus says that's not so because he goes and he passes a, a fig tree that has leaves but no fruit. And he curses it and he tells it to die. He says, you're not doing what I called you to do, so therefore you should die. And it says that the fig tree withered away at The voice of Jesus, it was dead. Although it looked like it had all of the cars, it had the money, had the kids in the best schools, it had the best uh, um, clothes on, everything looked like it was good. But he says, when I went looking for the fruit, there was no fruit. No fruit. No fruit. No patience. No love. No gentleness, no self-control. 
I can't get over it. I can't stop doing it. I've got none of the things that, the, and it doesn't say fruits of the spirit like these are things hanging off. He says, no, the fruit, that means it's all in one. This is what it looks like. He says, when I came to you and I put that boss in your life that you didn't like, you didn't produce no fruit. Now you're disconnected and you're running around trying to connect yourself to a source to get some life. And so you go into this boyfriend, into this marriage, into this job, into this environment, into this city. And you're looking to try to get connected. And he's saying the only way that you can get connected and produce something is if you get connected to the vine. All your insecurities is because you're not connected. You're working all day and all night and not seeing any production because you're not connected. God told me this week that your life should be the easiest now than it's ever been. The, right now, wherever you, it should be the easiest now than where you've ever been. He says the reason that you're working is because you're not connected. And you wonder why things aren't growing around you. You wonder why things aren't happening for you. And you look at other people that work half as much as you work and they have way more productivity. But yet you have every excuse in the book not to be connected. You have every excuse. I got this baby shower. I got to go over here. I got these friends. They're doing this. And you'll fail to come to church for one hour and 15, 20 minutes because you got so much. And then you wonder why you're so aggravated and you're so irritated and I'm so mad and I'm so frustrated. And I can look at you and say, yep, you're not connected. And then here is the, here's the crazy part. We'll know that it's not right and still do. Stuff's not growing, finances not growing, things aren't happening for me, but I'm still doing the same stuff over and over and over and over again, getting the same results, and they say that if you keep doing the same thing over and over and it doesn't work, that's called insane Christians disconnected from the, the true vine. So now I want you to look at three different areas of your life. There's three different sites uh, that I want you to, to take a gander over your own life. Uh, the first one is sight. Sight is what we can see right now. Look around, you see colors, you see uh, screens, you see all of these things. These are sight. This is what's happening right now. When we talk about vision, we're talking about foresight. Say foresight. That's in the future. That's, that's what we're looking to. That's what we're focused on. And then this is the best teacher of our life, hindsight. They say hindsight is what? 20, I can see clearly now the rain is gone and I can see why God said what he said even though I couldn't see it at the time. Now, a lot of you guys are older than 25 and so you have some hindsight moments where you can look back over your life and say, you know what, that was not the best decision. You, you ignored all of the signs, all of the signals, all of the things that told you to stop, and you went for it anyway, and you wound up falling on your face. And you wonder, man, why didn't I listen? You didn't listen because the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so when we don't listen to God, we are ultimately being destroyed. So I had something happen this morning. Uh, we were back there setting up the children's area. And uh, there are these little, if y'all have kids back there, there's these little mats that the kids can play on. And, and we throw them over there on the mat so that the kids can have something to do and they can run around and be active. And that way they're not running out the building doing some other stuff. And there's this cage that we put around uh, the toddler's area so that they can, they can work. And God was like, don't put those in there yet because you're about to put this thing in backwards. And I was like, oh, okay. So I'm going to be extra careful right now and make sure that I put this thing on right. Because God just told me we're going to put it on backwards and not to put the things in. So in my mind, I was like, well, cool. I'll just put these things over here now, and I'll make sure that we don't mess it up. He said, remember that. So we were very delicate about looking at the numbers, and I was like, okay, we're going to put this thing on right. Got it all the way around, and guess what? Wrong. Stupid. I just told you not to put this stuff in there. And I was like, God, how many times do we do that, though? Like, that's something that's just small. Like, that's just a little thing. How many of the big things did we do that? 
How many of the big relationships you know going into it, this is not good, but oh, he finds. So I got to walk into my anointing. God has set this and prepared this for me. And your heart's broken and now you got a baby and now you're trying to figure out how we're going to get him to pay child support. Let me not get too personal in your business. But there's something about sight that will attract us to a great dead place. Because a lot of us are making choices disconnected. Disconnected, disconnected. And you look good. Tell them you look good. Like you look like money. But in your heart, there's no peace. There's no love. There's no joy. There's no faithfulness. There's no gentleness. There's no self-control. And he's saying that apart from me, you can bear no fruit. So now he cuts that branch off. You're cut. You wasn't producing anything. You cut. I put you in this situation. You got cut. I put you over here. You got cut. I gave you a husband that was good. I cut that off. I cut you off. I cut you off. You are now cut. Then he says, for the ones that are on the tree, I'm not going to cut you off, but I'm going to clean you up. Now, this is a, this is a, this is a tough part. Why, why, do, why do you prune trees? Why do you prune them? Anybody know why you prune them? Prune them? So that they can grow. So that means that there are certain things in your life that have to be cut off in order for it to grow. So I said, well, well, God, is it up for us to cut off? He says, can a branch cut off its own tree? No. Can a branch cut off its own leaves? No. Can it cut off the things, the water sprouts and the things that are growing off of it? No. And he says, the only way that that can be cut off is I have to cut it off. Because some of the things that are growing on our branches, we have come to like them and we love them. We love them so much that we don't want to lose them. And when we lose them, we feel like God has cut us off. Some of us are addicted to having a bad attitude. Some of us are addicted to conflict and chaos. Some of us are addicted to some type of stress and strain. We always got to have a rebuttal. We always got to come back with something. We always got to have this contentious spirit. I always got to argue. It's a part of me. And God is saying, if it's fruitful in you, then that part of you I'm going to cut off. But some of us are addicted to that because we think that's what makes us successful. They call me the shark around here. I got to maintain a reputation. And he's saying, if your reputation goes against what I've called the fruit of the spirit, then guess what? You're wasting time. Matter of fact, the things that people like you and they follow you on Instagram and they like what I put out here when you're putting out that junk, he's saying that stuff needs to stop. But don't worry. If I don't get it in its baby stages, when the things get really big, it's going to really hurt. Some of y'all are feeling this right now. Like, you know, when something is removed and it really, really is painful, that's because it got too big. He tried to nip it in the butt when he was down there uh, putting the kids' stuff together when he told you don't put those mats in there when you put the thing around. I tried to do it while you were still small, but if you can't get it when it's small, I'm going to have to get it when it's big. I started this start this thing up, but it's got smoke in it, so we talked about health last week, so I'm not going to get y'all this week. I'm going to make sure y'all got it. But when the sin gets real big, and he's got to cut it off, and that's, that's that stuff, those addictions that you've been, you've been struggling with for a long time, and they keep getting worse, and they keep getting you in, in more sin. Now you $2,000 in the hole. Now you $20,000 in the hole. Now you're on marriage number six. You're on marriage number seven. Now you uh, don't have no best friends because all of them gone. He says, if I have to get it when it's big, it's going to hurt. But guess what? It's for your good. What the parents say, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to. It never made sense to me as a kid. You ain't hurting at all. But as a parent, I get it. It's not the physical pain. It's the emotional pain knowing that you couldn't get it just because I told you. Some of y'all just can't get it when they tell you. How many of y'all have a hard time listening the first time? Just be honest. 
God got to whoop your head in order for you to get it. Whole life done changed. Some of y'all, he whooping your head and you don't even know. You're like, why is it not working? Why is this thing not changing? Why I keep going back and forth? What is this thing that I'm going through? And you're wondering, God, why? God, why? He says, I'm trying to prune you so that you can grow, stupid. Because all of us want to grow. Now, I believe this. I believe that if we learn love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control, if we can learn those four ele- nine elements, if we can learn those nine, if we can learn those nine elements, every area of our life, the finances, the addictions, and our attitude will be automatic. You know why? Because people love being around people that are loving. Matter of fact, people are your greatest problem, but people are the greatest part of your purpose. Jot this down. Purpose is not the destination. Purpose is the journey to get there. It's not the destination. Some of us are like, I'm looking for my purpose and I'm looking for the end goal. And God is saying, that's not the end goal. It's what you do along the journey. Meaning that I can take my purpose anywhere. I can take it to the gas station. I can take it to the supermarket. I can take it off of Cullen. I can take it off of Harwin. I can take it in the Heights. I can take it uh, in Missouri City. I can take my purpose wherever I am, wherever God plants me, I have purpose. Matter of fact, look at the person next to you right now. Look at, look at him right now. Look at him. Look at him. That person has a purpose for your life right now. He set you there. He placed you there. If you were looking at every area of your life where God can work a miracle, you can see that everywhere that you stand and where you sit, he's working a thing out. Matter of fact, some of the stuff we don't know until years later that we can see, God, I didn't even see how you put that thing together. We've had purpose sitting next to us the whole time, but we were blinded by the enemy that came to steal, kill, and destroy Thank you.